gloom and doom about the economy. That's all we read and all we see on television. Well, I'm Fred Thompson, bringing you a little holiday cheer. No, I'm not talking about that kind of cheer. I'm talking about some good news about the economy. You see, I've been with the government in Washington, so I've come to understand the complexities of it all. The intricacies of the economy that may be over the head of the average person who only applies common sense to these matters. So what's the good news? First, a little history. How did we get into this economic mess? Well, spending. We spent our way here. No generation of Americans have ever spent more than we have. Now, you've heard all the talk about people with the government's encouragement buying houses that they couldn't afford and Wall Street repackaging those risky mortgages into riskier instruments and selling them to even bigger fools than they were, all based upon the notion that housing prices would go up forever. They were doing all this with unsecured borrowed money. If you work in tall buildings in New York and make millions of dollars every year, it's called leverage. If you work just about anywhere else, it's called living above your means. But housing was just the tip of the iceberg. For a good while there, it seemed that we were all on a national borrowing, spending, and consuming binge. We saved very little. And of course, then the bubble bursts. But here's the good news. The government has figured out what we should do. More borrowing, more spending and consuming. That's right. We can spend our way to prosperity. The floodgates are now officially open. On borrowed money, we can bail out and reward irresponsible home buyers, greedy Wall Street executives, and big businesses that can't cut it in the marketplace. And the rest of us can just buy more stuff, you know, to save the economy. Now, you may have noticed that the bailout plan changes every few days in Washington, but it's not like they don't know what they're doing. Government officials assure us that things would be much worse without their plan whatever that plan turns out to be. But it's not as if they're throwing money around indiscriminately, no. Not just everybody can qualify for this bailout money. There is strict criteria in order to qualify for a bailout. Recipients must have screwed up on a monumental scale. No little screw ups will be rewarded. Now the government has just assumed this last year almost $8 trillion in obligations. That's about half the size of our entire economy. So we're really getting on top of this thing. But our government alone can't spend all this money. You have to help. You will be required to spend more money too. This brings us to the miracle of the stimulus package. The government plans to borrow additional billions of dollars so that they can send it to us and we can turn around and spend it. We'll be encouraged not to save it, but to spend it immediately, thereby reviving the economy. Of course, this didn't work out too well in the Great Depression, but we're told by reputable liberal economists that it was only because we didn't spend enough. We're not going to make that mistake again. Now, there have been a lot of good ideas as to how to get this money in people's hands quickly. Uh, some have suggested, for example, that we drop it by airplane. But that leaves something to be desired. Uh, some people will have bigger rakes than others. It won't be distributed equitably. My favorite stimulus idea is to give everybody who needs a job a shovel. We put half the people to work digging holes. We get the other half to fill them up. Everybody gets a check and the unemployment problem solved. And there's no limit to the number of holes that we can get Americans to dig and fill. Of course, severe penalties would have to be imposed upon anyone caught saving. As an important part of this spend yourself to prosperity plan, the government has most recently come up with an $800 billion plan designed to make it easier for you to run up your credit card debt. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, I know you've always been told that that's the last thing you should do, but who are you going to listen to, your financial advisor or the government? I bet you never got a check from your financial advisor. The plan will also make it easier for people to refinance their mortgages so that they'll have additional borrowed money that they can go out and spend. Okay, I know what you're thinking. I thought we said we got into this trouble 
by borrowing, spending, and not saving. Well, that's true. But as the Washington experts and politicians have tried to explain to us, the way to get out of this economic mess is to double down on the stuff that got us into the mess in the first place. And now to the gentleman at my last lecture who said that this sounded like telling a fat guy that the way to lose weight is to eat more donuts. I can only say that there are clearly some among us who still don't quite understand the sophistication of the new economy. The experts say, sure, we still need to save more, but not yet. Uh, that can only come after we've spent enough to ensure prosperity. So we can't afford to save right now. We can only afford to spend. Now, for those of you who think that this sounds absurd and insist on applying outmoded concepts of common sense, I can only point out to reassure you that this is all being presided over by the same politicians, government officials, business executives, and economists who have guided us to where we are today. So obviously these people have the necessary experience to guide us through these tough economic times. Fortunately, the president-elect promises to even more aggressively follow these policies. Now, the confidence that these policies have engendered in the marketplace is reflected in the lofty heights to which the stock market has risen. And for all of you naysayers out there who say that we can never pay off these new trillions of dollars of obligations when we already have a 30 to $40 trillion shortfall in our Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security programs, which are on the path to bankruptcy, I can only say... Yes, we can. This is the best part of all, in fact. We can print all the money we need. We own the printing presses. The government plans to create as much money as we need to cover all this. Isn't it beautiful in its simplicity? Now, of course, not too far in the future, we will have rampant inflation, and it'll take a wheelbarrow full of money to buy a loaf of bread, and the Chinese undoubtedly will see what's going on and quit lending us money and our economy will collapse. But the bottom probably won't fall out for years, long enough for our generation to fully enjoy the benefits of an artificially pumped up economy before we pass the bill on to our children. So this holiday season, be extra nice to the kids. Bless their hearts, they have no idea what's in store for them. But of course, that's their problem. Our job your job this holiday season is to follow the lead of our government. Spend more than you can afford, more than you can ever possibly pay back. Ask not what your country can spend for you. Ask what you can spend for your country. Isn't that what made America a great country? Happy holiday season.